Welcoming back Levi Sim for a second year in a row uh, by popular demand is a Levi Sim UMAC photographer. Woo! Um, if you ever thought photography was just hanging out behind a camera, you haven't met Levi. Uh, he has been a passionate photographer for 15 years. He loves making photos of people in their places, doing the things they love. For the last three years, he's been making marketing photos full-time for us here at Utah State. When he's not photographing people in landscapes and esoteric research subjects for the university, he's publishing wild game recipes. We might need some of those. Training his kids to endure, I mean, no scratch that, enjoy the outdoors. Take it away, Levi. on now now the mic's on thank you um thanks julie thanks for coming thanks for being here oh uh, i've got a bunch of things to talk to you about and please interrupt with questions at any point um that just makes me happy to have you interrupt with questions <laughs> so congratulations you did it you've got a website with all your stuff on it uh you, and thanks to Kat and Jen, you've got excellent copy on your website. Now, you just need to, like, slow down a little, okay? Don't set your boss's expectations too high. Let's pull it back. You need some room to grow. You don't want to work yourself out of a job. These kind of things, right? So, let's talk today about how you can ruin your website with photos. I'd like to first share seven great ways to ruin your website with photos. And then I will also share seven techniques that pro photographers use to make sure that you need to hire them. <laughs> because these are things that you can't do on your own, naturally. This is all, this is all word of, of what, tongue in cheek? Is that the word? Yeah. Take everything I say as, as not real. So the first great way to ruin your website is to use AI uh, for your photos. It is hot. It is totally trendy and uh, absolutely not ready for commercial use, but you should use it anyway. <laughs> Who cares if it produces somewhat anatomically incorrect people? Like, my bowl has six fingers on that hand, which, <laughs> which is also very common. And you saw, so, so I, put in, I put into the um, Adobe Firefly, which is Adobe's image generator tool. It's in beta. <laughs> And I put in there, uh, make me a comic flyer for how to ruin your website with photos with a big bull, or with a blue bull superhero. And those were all the results you saw playing on the, on the slideshow beforehand. Um, and so, yeah, you should totally use AI to make, make all the images for your website. You could just Photoshop it later. Uh, another great way to ruin your website is to use generic stock photos for things. Uh, you could use pictures of flowers or pictures of buildings or pictures of flowers and buildings. And you can totally add all kinds of bland imagery to your website that doesn't have anything to do with your content or your office or your college. It doesn't matter, we just need pictures. That's, that's the only thing that's important. So if you want people, there's nothing better to fill your pages than um, a perfectly diverse set of college age looking students looking at some indescript, nondescript thing on a laptop or in a book or on a phone. And so head over to Adobe Stock and, and get those kind of pictures. It would be way better than going to usu.photoshelter.com to find all kinds of great content that I really spend my life making for you to use. <laughs> um, and so you would, you would also find lots of very stock-like imagery of students laughing with one another, but they would be on our campuses wearing our t-shirts, and you wouldn't have to Photoshop a USU emblem on, which, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. It's, we've tried that. Um, they'd, be, they'd be doing activities in different seasons. It would make your webpage look really relevant and applicable to the people looking at your website. So... Don't do that. Don't go to usu.photoshelter.com to find really useful pictures. Um, you'd find like actual advisors talking 
to actual students, you'd find all these pictures where people have signed model releases to be depicted this way in your content. And, um, and that, uh, you don't need that. We don't, we don't need that. In fact, we have tens of thousands of photos available on Photo Shelter right there. But if you really want to ruin your website, you'll only use the popular pictures that everybody else has been using. Overusing the same photo so that basically your site looks exactly like everybody else's site is a great way to ruin your website. So go ahead and do that. Um, in fact, just to make sure that you overuse popular pictures, we include the person you should contact to ask if this picture has already been overused. Right in the, in the, the, the so this is a, a screenshot of the, of the page, and right here is an info button. If you click on the info button, you'll see all kinds of keywords, which, by the way, would also lead you to more similar pictures so that you wouldn't be overusing a photograph. Like if you wanted more student life pictures, you could click there. If you wanted student life outdoor pictures, you can just use all these keywords to link and link and link to more and more pictures. You could go Logan, you could go not Logan, you could go on campus, and you'd see lots of different things. And then you could contact Ryan Jensen and say, hey, I was thinking about using this picture for my poster that's gonna be all over campus. Would that be okay? And Ryan might come back and say, well, you could, but so-and-so just used that picture for their thing that was all over campus. And you know, it wouldn't really be distinct if you use the same, the same pictures over and over again. Um, oh, also, you could go up there in the search bar and search for student Brigham City. Uh, no, don't do Brigham City. We don't have a lot of content for there. Uh, you could do for student Eastern Outdoors laptop. And you would find pictures of students using laptops at uh, Utah State University Eastern. But you wouldn't want to do that because that wouldn't ruin your website quite as much as you're probably hoping. Um, also, all the pictures, well, I was going to say all the pictures I used are from Photo Shelter, but I, at the end I used a few pictures that I made a long time ago to describe something. So almost all the pictures I use are found on Photo Shelter for a great diversity. So do as I say, not as I'm doing, by using Photo Shelter to find pictures. Are there any questions about Photo Shelter? Have you guys, raise your hand if you've used Photo Shelter to find a photo to use. Oh, good. I don't like the site, but I really like its results. So if, uh, if you have any questions about how to use it, we've, we've studied a lot about how to make it work better for us. In fact, you can do, in the search bar, you can do a search term, and then you can subtract a search term using the minus key. So I could do student on campus, and that would show me all the students on all the campuses. But I could say minus Logan, minus Moab, minus something, and, and just see students from Blanding and Price and Vernal and Tooele, for instance. Did you know we have 30 campuses throughout the state? So, all right. No questions? Excellent. Here's another great idea um, on Photo Shelter is that you should go on there in order to ruin your website really well. You should go on there and download the entire gallery of all the pictures that you kind of like. Um, the, the reason you should do that is because as we use Photo Shelter, sometimes we re-edit a photograph. Like we might be like, oh man, when I first edited that picture, it was like a teal sky. I'm going to go back and correct that. And I might correct it to make it better. Um, I might, I might re-edit some photos, like, some, like graduation time. Sometimes we barf all the pictures onto Photo Shelter real quick so everybody could go download them. But then we might go back and, and put a finer tooth, you know, put, go, go, go over them and make them look a little bit better. And so as we do that and I, I republish them to Photo Shelter, the best picture is always there. But if you downloaded them and you got the old version, then when you publish them on your website, it'll look like the teal sky version of Old Main. And so that would be a great way to ruin your website. It also, um, well, and here's another example too. So Old Main has a new roof. And my boss would like me to tell you about the roof. Because if you're using pictures of Old Main with a shingle, with wooden shingle roof, he's gonna hunt you down. And he's gonna come over there 
I don't know, it's going to be gross. It's going to be bad. Whatever he does to you, it's going to be bad. So don't use old pictures of Old Main. And if you download pictures from Photo Shelter, you will not find old pictures of Old Main. You'll find new pictures of Old Main. You'll find new pictures of Old Main with the new paint job it got last, was it last summer? New paint job. So we don't need cracked paint falling off the railings in some of our photos. Also, and this one's real important, we keep up to date with the Office of Student Conduct because sometimes there's a reason a student in a photograph shouldn't be featured on your website and it might be kind of embarrassing if they were. <laughs> but if you already downloaded all your favorite pictures and you just keep using them over again, you may not realize that that person is not allowed to be representing your college or your office for whatever reason. We've also had instances where a student has passed away and it's just a little uncouth to continue using those photos. So, um, if you download those photos, you won't have the updated things. Instead, what you could do, instead of downloading photos, if you didn't want to ruin your website, is that you could click on this button, it's a star, and it says add to light box. And then you get this little thing pops up and you, you click here and you create a new light box. And it's just your own little collection of photos. You could call it students outside looking at phones and you could collect all your favorite pictures of students outside looking at phones. And if, if we need to go and delete any or make changes to any, all those changes are automatically updated into your light box, which is really cool. And it's a, it's a great way to keep all your relevant pictures or to keep your pictures relevant. So rather than downloading photos, you, like you download the ones you use, rather than downloading a whole bunch of them all at once and then using them over the next several months, just make a light box that collects your photos. That's what you would do if you didn't want to ruin your website. Yeah, any questions on light boxes or anything? Yeah, Hayden. Do I have a list of all the keywords that we use? No. Um, if you go to brands, no, usu.edu slash brands, slash brands, brand, usu.edu slash brand, you'll find a photo resources page in there, and there's a, a good exemplary set of keywords. What I would do is I would, um, I would start looking, and then I would kind of look and see I would kind of look and see what other words are linked. And I, I, I would kind of start figuring out. I think, I think we're pretty good. Somebody throw me out an example of a picture you'd want to use on your, on your website. Student eating Aggie ice cream. We have keywords for ice cream. We have keywords for student. I think we have a keyword for Aggie ice cream. <laughs> and so that would absolutely come right up. You could also do indoor or outdoor. You could also put in the word stock, and then you would just see stock pictures of Aggie ice cream without people in them. Does that help? Okay, sorry, I don't have a complete list, and the list changes every day because we are adding new pictures. Like, we probably add 400 new pictures, just, just a ballpark, four to 100 to 1,000 new pictures onto Photo Shelter every month, and whatever subjects are in there, we, we categorize them as generally specific as we can. <laughs> like I, I put ice cream, I don't put blue mint. But it does have ice cream. And we put laptop and computer because sometimes a computer is a laptop but it's not always, no. A computer can be a laptop but a, no. A laptop's always a computer but a computer isn't always a laptop. So you could use either of those to figure it out and find, uh, find the right pictures if you didn't want to ruin your website. And if you don't have strategy for your website, then ruining your, picture with, your website with pictures is super easy. I like baby wild horses is a good enough reason to put baby wild horses on your website. Because who doesn't like baby wild horses? Utes, that's who, Utah Utes. <laughs> so when I, whenever I make a picture, I, University of Utah, Utes versus Utah. <laughs> when I make a photo, I like to say to myself, I like this scene, I like this picture because of this and because of this. And because of that, I'm going to do this and this to accentuate that. I like this picture because I've got a person 
uh, an advisor talking to the student. The advisor is the important part of my picture this time, so I'm going to frame it so that she's the subject, and this could be any student, but she's the person I'm highlighting because this picture is going to be used in a brochure about this advisor. So these are the things that I think about as I, do, as I, as I make the pictures. And so you could say to yourself, whenever you're thinking about using a photo, you could say, I like this photo because it meets my need for this, and it relates to my picture this way, and it helps my viewer understand this thing. Um, and so like, if your page is referencing advising and scholarships, it happens to say scholarships on that page, this would be a relevant kind of picture and you could find a photo showing those things. You won't find a photo showing scholarships if you search in Photo Shelter. You will find lots of pictures under advising, though. And another strategy you could, um, another strategy you should use, no, you should avoid, <laughs> this is getting difficult, guys, being all negative about ruining your website, um, making your page consistent is a great way to not ruin your website. So if you want to reuse, ruin your website, don't use similar pictures in similar styles, similar colors, similar brightnesses, similar moods. When, when you do that, it draws a person down to the next picture and draws them through your content and they keep looking. If you have very disparate things that aren't necessarily related, it doesn't, it doesn't draw you on. It, it kind of it kinda stops. And... Um, You'll see, you'll see on Photo Shelter that most of our photos have a very natural kind of a style to them. We don't have blue shadows and orange highlights and fuzzy edges and, and lots of contrast. They're, they're very natural. We do that because they last longer. If we use today's Instagram style, it's very quickly yesterday's Instagram style, and then our pages look dated. You can do that because you can update your page as often as you want. Um, but, and, and you can add whatever Instagram filter to these pictures you want to. That's why I try to make them fairly natural and neutral. But they're also very bright and generally cheerful is kind of the style we go for. So if you go out and make pictures that are not those things, then it would not be on brand either. And just like a pretty picture isn't necessarily good. Sometimes having a fine picture is just a thing to draw you through, but generally if you strategize your content a little better, I think you're going to see better results. Um, and like a pretty, sometimes just a, a pretty picture doesn't make sense. But it doesn't need to make sense. Why? Because baby goats. <laughs> That's why. Um, so number five, the best way, the number five way to ruin your website, and as long as you're not strategizing, you might as well use all the functions your website includes. Why does it even have a gallery function if you're not supposed to host all the photos from your event on your website, right? We had a, we had a great closer at our commencement thing with ice cream and stuff, and I've got 400 pictures from that event that I want to get to my students, and they are definitely going back to my website after they graduate, so I'm going to host all those pictures in there. And instead of, you know, posting one picture that is itself an embedded link to my social media pages where they could go and download pictures or share them or tag themselves and their friends and get clicks back and enhance SEO a little bit, I'm just going to put them all right there on my department website. Um, it's, oh yeah, it's so much better to scroll through several pages to get down to see what the next event's going to be coming up. So be sure to host all the photographs on your web page. Also, you should use group photos as often as possible to ruin your website. I don't think Sid Peterson's going to forgive me for this, but if you are... Uh, if, if you use group photos... Everybody loves group photos, right? Especially if you're in them. However, if you weren't in them... It's hard to connect with that picture. And it's especially hard to connect with that picture when you flip it vertically on your phone and it crops out the people who are in the group on the sides. You know, we've got adaptive web websites. So group photos end up 
kind of ruining your website actually <laughs> really easily because whatever connection I was making to this photograph, half of it's gone when I adaptively view the photo in a vertical orientation. So, um, yeah. A better way to not, to, ru to not ruin your website would be to show pictures of your team working, doing the thing that they do. Showing the people, that's great, but showing them in a, rel in a relevant manner, especially if you make sure that it crops good, crops well, crops correctly when you flip it vertically. Now, group pictures are great. I love to see a group picture hanging on the wall. That makes me feel like I'm part of that team. When I see my face and I see Kat's face and Andrew's face and everybody's on the wall together, it reminds me of that time. It reminds me that I'm part of a team. That's marvelous. I'm not looking at my website, right? My team isn't looking at our website. It doesn't, it doesn't have that kind of impact. Yes? Yeah. How do, how do we know how it's going to be cropped? How do we know how it's going to look when it gets to here? Um, I don't know. Let's, let's look at a thing here. If, if it's me, I come, where would I go? I inspect the element. I am not, I am not a... Um, uh, let's go to usu.edu. I am not a web person whatsoever. I can barely do a... See, I can't even go to usu.edu. It goes to the directory. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so there's, there's our new president. If I go down here and I go to inspect, then this window pops up. And if I come over here... Oh, it showed me. How do I get back to it? There it is. Look at this. It shows me how big that dimension is going to be. And can, can you see that on the screen? And up here, I can switch, I can click this button and switch it to and from a mobile device. And that's what I do. I don't know if I'm able to peg it so that it crops from a, I, is that a thing? You can't do that? It just goes to the middle. Is that right? Okay. So what I would do, if it was me, I think I might make a picture with blue on the sides. It's not a beautiful thing to do. Or better yet, just don't use a picture that has such a subject. Like, it's always going to crop to the middle. And so the sides are going to be gone. And, it's, and it, ch it changes depending on how wide my page is, right? Come on. Right there. And so it keeps, it keeps changing size as I go. But we've got a 500 pixel tall. 400 pixels tall banner, a 200 pixel tall banner. And so you can adjust the thickness of that banner, but it's always going to adaptively change width as you go. Am I saying that right? You guys know better than me <laughs> as far as that goes. Does that help? Okay. I'm sorry I don't, I don't have a, a, a really great way to like anchor, like I I thought there was a way we used to be able to like anchor a spot so that it would crop that dry. Is that not a thing? It should be a thing. <laughs> we'll take it under advice. <laughs> uh, so whenever I'm doing, oh, whenever I'm doing headshots, people frequently ask me for a group photo and I always verify that they are in fact trying to ruin their website before I agree to make them. Uh, so actually my, my policy is to not make group photos especially when we're doing headshots. And speaking of headshots, variety is the spice of life, right? That must be why we have such a variety of headshots on our directories across all of USU. We have pictures made indoors, we've got pictures made outdoors, we've got pictures made with flash, we've got square pictures, vertical pictures, horizontal pictures, pictures made with iPhones, pictures made with fancy cameras. Oh, and my favorite are pictures made 15 or 20 years ago. There's a reason we use headshots, and it's so that we can be recognized. Um, but having a huge variety of headshots is a really terrific way to show an ununified team, and 
that it's not important to you how your team looks. Did I say that right? Yeah, in the sarcastic manner. Some of the most successful companies in the world try to have a unified style of headshot. Here's, here's Apple. I have, I have comments for them, but here's, here's Walmart. They're, they're, they're all at least on the same background, these guys. Here's Microsoft. Circles, white backdrops. This was all done after the fact. I don't know if any of these people were photographed on a white backdrop, but they have a white backdrop now, and we could, we could do that. We can do that in Canva. Do you have Canva? Yeah. Canva will take your picture and put a white backdrop behind it so that we're not on a background, so that we're not one of the bridesmaids in a row. So <laughs> raise your hand if you're a bridesmaid on your directory. Just your <laughs> Don't raise your hand. Um, so if, if these people don't all have the same style of photo, at least they have the same shape of photos with, with the same backdrops to them. Um, I'm, I'm pretty proud that I've published more than 2,000 headshots in the last three years for USU. And we, <laughs> I, think, I think we could give the biggest companies in the world a run for their money as far as showing a unified front and looking like we're all part of the same team. I, I know you don't love a Who's had a headshot? With me? Oh, good. I love that. Um, I love doing it. I really enjoy doing it. I know that you don't like it. I'm glad that you did it anyway. And, and this is why, because, because it shows us as a unified team. And, um, and I feel it's important. Anyway, you, you might have noticed also that I say making pictures. Have you noticed I say that? I say we're going to go make a picture, especially when we're making a headshot, because it's the thing that we do together. It's, and if, if I'm taking your headshot, that's just the wrong thing we're doing. And so when we're working on a picture together, we're making it together, and, and these are some of the results that we get doing that. Um, also, I prefer to call them business portraits, generally. Headshots, I think, is something you do at hockey games. <laughs> so our, our policy with headshots is that they are on a white backdrop. Why is that? Because our teams are not all right here. You know, we've got people scattered across the state. We've got people scattered around the world, and so... Anywhere you go in the world, you can make a picture with a white backdrop, or you can use Canva or Photoshop to make a white backdrop on a person. And so it's very easy to be standard and, and unified in this little way. Um, and that's, that's why we do them on white, and we don't do them outdoors. And, and if you got hired in January, your outdoor picture would look completely different from your coworkers who got hired in the summertime. Absolutely. And, you, you know, they could shoot it with an iPhone. Now, some tips for not ruining your headshot or for ruining your headshot. Yeah, ruining your headshot. Use the 0.5 lens on your iPhone and put a spot, like stand right under a floodlight. That's a really good tip, too, so that, so that you have really strong raccoon. Is it or is that too much? There we go. See those raccoon eyes on me? That's what you want on a headshot. Um. No, it's, so we, we shoot them on white, and then we also use the skinny lens, which I appreciate. But we, we zoom in and back up. So when, when I make a headshot with you, you know, Julie's about, about the distance I am from people when I make a headshot with them, because using a telephoto lens presents a more flattering picture of everybody. Very few people look great with a wide-angle lens. Uh, and... So, but you could, you could absolutely stand in front of a white wall, maybe with a window next to you, shining some soft evening light in across you and have your friend take a picture with the 3X lens on your iPhone and then use Canva to make it a really white backdrop. I would absolutely recommend it. And I do recommend that you put a white backdrop behind the people you already have. Is that okay? Did I restate the question? The question was, do I recommend putting a white backdrop behind people we, who can't get here for a headshot? Yes, I definitely do. Let's see. Oh, also, the other reason 
The, the other thing, so I love doing headshots, and I spend about two and a half minutes with you when we do it, so it's very quick. Um, but I, I can't do that every week, and I can't do it offhand. We're surprisingly busy at UMAC Imaging. We're making pictures all over the state all the time, and it's, it's really fun. I love to do headshots, but I can only offer them a couple of times a semester for the most part. So you'll find, um, you'll find that we have those, those opportunities available. Regarding group pictures still though, or again, um, I, so I do the headshots, what was the thing? I don't know. <laughs> when, whenever, whenever you call me and say, hey, can you do headshots for my office? I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say come when we do headshots to my studio. And the reason is, you cannot get 10 people to show up at the same time on the same day. 15 years of experience here talking. It cannot happen. <laughs> Somebody will miss it, and, and then they'll have a different headshot anyway. So you guys can come down anytime when we're doing headshots and get a similar looking photograph. Any questions? Anybody know where you can find the link to sign up for headshots? What's your question? Is UMAC going to enforce that as a standard across the university? I mean... Good, that would be cool. I wouldn't mind. I, I wouldn't mind. Good to do it then. That would be awesome. I'm bringing a bull whip to everybody's offices and we're going to get everybody in line. I appreciate it. Thank you. There you go. So, yes. Are we going to enforce it as a standard across the university? Yeah, unless you have your department hire a different photographer who comes and takes them in front of the leafy trees for... 11 of your 15 teammates, yeah. <laughs> I guarantee there will always be somebody who doesn't get the picture. So uh, I don't have any way to enforce it, except that I'm not doing it otherwise. <laughs> so if you want a picture with me, by golly, this is how it's gonna be. Okay, so this is about what it looks like when I make a picture of you. This is my whole frame. And I, I, usually I have more space above your head, but my tripod was a little lower, so I was already down like this, and I was using my phone to control the picture. Anyway, it looks about like this. And I turn your hips one way. Do you remember this? And I turn your face back this way. And I say, stick your head out like a turtle. These are all calculated, <laughs> calculated things to, to help you look good in a picture. Uh, and I always shoot it horizontally, and, and there's a couple of reasons why. I also try to tilt the camera so that your eyes are are level when I take the photo, and then when I finish cropping the picture, I'm gonna adjust it a little bit more so that your eyes are just about level so that you look like a normal person. <laughs> because when you're standing in front of my camera going like this, there's not a lot of normal things going on there. So I, I try to help it work. And when I deliver it, I'm gonna crop it in a four thirds ratio. So the four on the long side and three on the short side. This is a common shape. It's, it's useful online. It fits on your 1982 television really nicely. And um, lots of templates use a four-thirds ratio. And it's, it's kind of it's normal for us to, to see. And from there, it's really easy to make a square. So you can crop the sides off a little, and it makes an easy square, which is what your profile pictures on social media all are. Your picture on your email, that teeny tiny little one, that's a square. Squares are a great way to go. I would recommend either four-thirds or a square for your directories, a horizontal four-thirds. And the great thing about squares is that they are or they are not. <laughs> it's, you can't kind of be a square. You can't kind of have a, a ver like there's, there's a lot of variation in the vertical pictures on directories because you can upload any picture you want and it can be as tall, I think, as you want it to be. It's limited on the width. And I've seen somebody crop theirs, somehow they got it cropped like 16 by nine vertically. And so it's very skinny, but it takes up almost twice as much room as everybody else's on the page. It's your directory. Um, so so squares, squares are easy to homogenize and they fit in a circle. I think a circle's cool. Microsoft does too, so. Um, they're just a truncated square. Here's, if you need a vertical picture, you can crop it farther. So we went from four thirds to square to a vertical, yeah, a more vertical even. This is, a, this is a four by six, which is what many of us have on our directories right now is a vertical four by six. And so I shoot horizontally because we can get all of this from a horizontal picture, but it is, 
it is really difficult to crop a 16 by 9 for Utah State today out of a vertical picture. So we took my vertical picture and tried to crop it horizontally. It doesn't look good. And it's very difficult to do. We get lots of submissions from new employees or somebody who's, who's publishing a paper and they, they send us this little vertical picture. And it, it, it you know, if, if you don't want to see the entire face, we can put that on, on Utah State today, but it's just very difficult. And we'll talk, we'll talk about more ways to, to use cropping to ruin your website, but this is a good start. Cropping right at the neckline. That's a, that's a great way to ruin your website. If I had my way, this is how I would deliver your headshots to you. Are, are you laughing because it's silly or, or because it zapped you like it's got impact? It draws the important stuff to the important part of the frame. And there's nothing going on up here you need to see, people. There's nothing right here, okay? For some of us, there's nothing right here. So, we, Christopher, you good? Yeah. <laughs> and, and there's nothing going on down here I need you to see in my photo either. I don't need a vertical picture of me. This, this isn't getting better with time. And so, so crop it tight. And also, um, I, I know that many of you opened your, the link when I sent you your headshots and you saw this and you freaked out because you see it like this. But everybody else is going to see it like this. We're looking at it on our phone. We're looking at that. How big is that thing in the corner of my email that says your name? It's like four pixels. It is itty bitty. So don't freak out when you see your headshot really big. And remember that everybody else is going to see it like this. So cropping tightly gives you the impact from your picture, shows your, your smile, your eyes. Hopefully it looks like you so that when you come into a room, people recognize you from the, the time they saw your phone or your picture on their phone. Yeah. Any questions? Anybody know where to sign up for a headshot? <laughs> Headshots are on June 6th. June 6th and July 11th. You can find them at aggie.link slash headshots. I'd love for you to come. I'd love for those Microsoft folks to come too. Oh, so those are my seven tips for ruining your website with photos. Any, any questions to this point? Good, because I'm a little behind. Now, let's talk about techniques that photographers use to ensure you need their services. This is stuff normal people just can't do. On, you, can't, you can't just make pictures look like this by moving your camera. Well, I mean, they move their camera around and make them look like this. But normal people, I don't know. So by understanding what the photographers do to make their pictures look good, you can be sure to avoid these techniques so that your pictures don't look good. In fact, you can even ruin good pictures from photographers with these techniques on, on, on an already good picture. You can ruin its effect on your website. And the first one is cropping. So here's the full frame of this photograph. If we, if we crop it wrong, it gets kind of uncomfortable. Like we, we cut everybody's waist off. Here, here's a rule that photographers use. We don't crop at joints, okay? If I'm, if I'm standing, if you've got a picture of me, which would be a bad picture to begin with, but if I'm standing here like this and you crop it at my waist and at my wrists, it just, it looks really bad. If I'm, if I'm holding my hand out here and you cut off my wrist, everybody imagines I'm Captain Hook over here otherwise. So pro photographers don't crop at the joints, in, in whatever picture, we, we crop mid-leg instead of at the knee. Let me, let me see if these other... It was hard to find examples on photo shelter of bad cropping because I try not to publish pictures of bad cropping. So here's, here's one. If I, if I... Oh, I thought I had a little higher. If I crop it right at our knees, though, it leaves us wanting something more down below. And then if I, if I crop it at her wrists, not only is that weird, but she's also... So here's the other thing. Is she's looking at a thing... And we should be looking at all the things in this picture. Her arms are pointed at this thing and her eyes are pointed at this thing. And we can't see the thing. That's a bad crop. And so don't crop it like that. Here's, here's another example. We've got a close-in 
this is now flipped from the same, the same shoot of pictures. And if we crop it, like disembodied hands are what we want to avoid as well. So don't crop at joints. Um, and then, I mean, you could. It's a great way to ruin your sight. But understanding this little rule will also help you with some of the, some of the cropping stuff. Um, the rule of thirds. Have you heard of this? You've probably heard of this. You can turn this on on your phone. You wouldn't want to do that, though, because then you'd have some help making your pictures look a little more composed. It's better just to put your subjects right in the center of the photograph, both vertically and horizontally, leaving plenty of headspace around them where nothing is happening so that you can ruin your pictures. Instead, uh, we could use the rule of thirds. And so the, the rule is that things that are on these lines, on these thirds, are more interesting. Like our eyes are naturally drawn there. Our faces are developed this way. Like lots of things in our world obey these rules because they look good. And it's a nice, it's a nice way to go. And so as I'm photographing, I position the, the most important thing on the node where they intersect. I, I put them on the intersection of those thirds and that helps my viewer know what is important in this picture and it just, it's like, it just feels better looking. And it, it uh, doesn't matter how you crop, like what shape the picture is. Here it's a square, here it's four by three. Those thirds are still the same ratios. You just draw a tic-tac-toe field over your field of view and put things on the intersection of those lines. And it ends up kind of emphasizing it and looking nice. Rarely does it look really good to put the thing right dead center, right? If, if this thing was right there, there'd be a bunch of empty space above it and it would be all crowded down here with, with flowers and stuff. And that empty space makes it feel like a mistake. What was that one? Yeah, and so... Let's see. No, that's good. Here's, here's a couple more examples. My flower there, it's on the third right there. And so even though it's not dead center, it, it looks good. Okay, this is a little more complicated. You should put the horizon on the third, on the horizontal third, but you've got two of them, right? So you can choose what thing you're going to emphasize by where you place the horizon. Here, I've got kind of multiple horizons as well. Like, this is kind of a dividing line in this picture. And so I put the, the glowing rock that I want to emphasize up there, and then I put the, well, who knows if it's a good picture. <laughs> On headshots, it works this way too. This is why vertical headshots are bad, because if I, I want your eyes in the important part of the frame, but that leaves all this empty space, and then when we crop it teeny tiny to put it online someplace, you're even smaller in the frame, so that your eyes are in the good spot, but now you're teeny tiny, and we can't even tell what you look like. And so that's why I don't like vertical headshots, because the important stuff doesn't end up in the important spot. Any questions about that? So like uh, back here, on this picture, I would scoot them up. I would crop off the top of this fellow's hair and put put her a little higher and give her a little more space down here. If, if, like if I need this shape of a picture, I can move them up inside the frame and it would be much more comfortable instead of feeling like I've chopped off an already short person. It just feels better. Can I say that? Is that concrete enough for you? Perspective is all about where you place a camera to make the photo, and professional photogs put their cameras in more interesting places. Anybody recognize this in Germany? It's not in Germany, it's downtown Salt Lake, but you never get to view City Hall from, from level with City Hall, and so it ends up looking like a not American place. <laughs> I think it's pretty fun, because I put my camera in an unexpected spot. That's what we love about drones. That's, what, that's what's cool about using unmanned aerial vehicles to make photographs is that they can go to places that I can't put my thing otherwise. So it's not like, oh, well, you know what we need is some drone pictures. Drones don't make pictures. People make pictures with drones, right? We, need, we might want to use a drone to make a picture of that thing from this, 
from this position, from this perspective. And that might be a good reason to use a drone. Using a drone isn't a good reason to use a drone. <laughs> Does that make sense? Using a drone to make a great picture is a good reason. I'll shut up. So changing the perspective changes people's interaction with the photo. Um, and rarely is the entire thing needed. So get closer when you make a picture. Almost always get closer. The, the parts of the whole tell the story. And if, if I came back over here, what is it, a cherry tree? We know that. Julie. Oh, yeah. Thank you. It's a cherry tree. A picture of a cherry tree never looks as good as a picture of a flower on a cherry tree. And a picture of an entire cowgirl wrestling a baby goat doesn't look as good, perhaps. And it's not necessary to have the whole when the, the cues are here, we see the cowboy hat, we see the vest, we see the wranglers, we know she's working, she's doing rodeo, and she's got a U-State word mark on, so that's good. We don't need to see the top of this guy's head. We've got the microscope, we've got the gloves, we've got the lab coat. Those are the important things that tell us all the context about this photo. So get closer. And get lower. This is supposed to say get lower. <laughs> And it's supposed to be number four. You might be getting eight tips instead of seven. Uh, getting lower makes you feel like you're in the thing. Like I actually put my camera inside of the CT machine and controlled it remotely to make this picture. And I, I got down low so that, so that the perspectives are more intimate and make me feel like I'm right there with, with stuff. I can make pictures not low, but I should also make pictures down low and looking up. It also makes people look a little more heroic and like the thing that they're doing is, is pretty cool. Get down low. And, and especially, especially with kids and flowers, we are so sick of seeing pictures of a flower like this. This is how I see pictures of flowers all day when I walk around looking at flowers. I'm looking down on them. If I want an interesting picture of a flower, I can get down low on par with that flower and on par with children makes them look like people instead of distorted figures because their head is so much closer to my camera than their feet. So get down low. Shoot horizontally. Hold your hands out to the sides and, and notice where you start to see your fingertips at. Mine, mine are about right here when I'm looking forward. Can you see them? Yeah. And then if you go vertical, it's a, a much smaller, I've got a hat on, it's a much smaller space when you go vertical. Our world looks more like this than it does vertical. That's why we shoot movies in extremely wide fields of view, because this is how we see the world, and this is normal to us. Did you know, when you use your phone to take a picture, you can actually turn it sideways <laughs> to do it? And then your picture fits on a website <laughs> because websites are, are viewed horizontally too. When I view a website on my phone, if I have a vertical picture, it takes up the whole thing and I'm stopped, right? If, I, if I'm reading and I scroll down and there's a picture that takes up and it's going to take up more than one screen. If it takes up more than one screen, I'm out of there. I, I, need to, I need a little break with a photo and I need to see the words immediately there or I'm gone and it feels like, one of those weird things to do at nighttime to lose belly fat just interrupted my whole thing. So shoot horizontally. It's, it's just like a better way to see the world. But you should also shoot vertically. And the, the, it shows off the verticality of stuff and makes it look tall. And it's, it's really handy. But it's also, um, well, do it after you shoot horizontally. The best time to shoot vertically is right after you shoot horizontally. And then make sure that you shoot left and right. We're, we're making designs. We need to put Aggies all the way right here or we need to put Aggies all the way right there. So be sure when you shoot a great picture, move it to the left and move it to the right and shoot it again. And then turn your camera and shoot it vertically. And then switch lenses. Using a wide lens, this is a tight lens. Using a tight lens makes people look more normal and it makes the background much smaller too whereas using a wide lens shows the entire place and exaggerates the distances between things that's all thank you any questions <laughs> julie was getting on me she was 
she was coming up here. As always, a great privilege to learn from the best. Um, thank you. Thank you.